Hi, everyone, and welcome to the next episode of Axiad Cyber Resilience Vlog Series. I'm Joe Garber, Chief Marketing Officer of Axiad, and today we're delighted to welcome one of the world's top subject matter experts on the topic of cybersecurity, uh, Dave Kennedy. Dave is founder of two security industry success stories, Binary Defense and Trusted Sec. He also has served as a Chief Security Officer, is an accomplished author, is a consultant for a well-known TV show, a former Marine who's been deployed multiple times on intelligence missions, has been called upon to testify in Congress regarding emerging security requirements. So I think it's fair to say that we have a very good discussion in store today. So welcome, Dave. Thank you for joining us today. Joe, thanks for, for having me on. And uh, I'll need you to do the intro for me uh, for, uh, for, from here on out. If you can come to my presentations and uh, <laughs> record those, I'll, I'll use those. Those was really good. Thanks. I uh, appreciate it. Thanks so much. Yeah. Well, so let's get right to the good stuff and start the discussion with my first question for you. Uh, you know, it seems like identity security, in particular authentication, is in the spotlight recently. Have you seen this trend? And if so, you know, why do you believe it's so important at this juncture? You know, it's interesting. You look at um, where adversaries have kind of come from to where they are today. Uh, you know, corporations and companies continue to invest in, in cybersecurity. They continue to invest in products and technology, but yet uh, passwords and, and authentication uh, almost always ends up being one of the root cause issues that we see from a breach perspective. Um, over at Binary Defense and Trusted Sec, we have dedicated incident response teams. We monitor for intrusions all the time. And it's interesting to see if you, you look at a lot of the root cause analysis for most of these, uh, credential stuffing ends up being one of those, um, as well as you see um, sophistication and uh, specializations occurring now in a lot of the different types of, of uh, ransomware groups. Um, for example, um, there was just a ransomware group recently that uh, specializes in trying to circumvent multi-factor authentication uh, for corporations that already have it um, installed and implemented um, using the phishing models and ways to kind of redirect people and things like that. So they're getting more and more advanced with it. And when you look at uh, identity, when you look at a person or an individual within an organization, you know, when they're handling the authentication components and understanding who they are, that's not really being challenged today. Uh, you know, you usually have uh, usually a, a text message or maybe a, a push notification or maybe even nothing at all. I think there was a statistic at Microsoft's Blue Hat that 76% of Microsoft's customer base still didn't have multi-factor authentication deployed on, on Microsoft 365. So you have all of these problems around uh, authentication and authorization and proving who the identity of an individual is. And um, it's, it's important to understand that most of these attacks are occurring from those types of, of things. Um, we saw Colonial Pipeline happen you know, a couple of years ago. That was specifically from a backup VPN concentrator that... Uh, didn't have multi-factor authentication occurring. Um, the one from Uber is also another interesting one where um, they had a contractor and the adversary had bought credentials online and they spammed the contractor with the push notifications. And the first, I think like 16 times, the contractor hit deny, but the 17th time they hit approve and allowed the attacker directly um, you know, into their environment and then eventually caused, caused havoc there. And those types of attacks can happen to anybody. It's not a, a knock on any of the organizations there. Um, you know, users are still by far the number one area that uh, adversaries and attackers go after. It's, it's rarely a flaw on the outside perimeter uh, that these attackers take advantage of because there's just so much low hanging fruit around the person, the individual uh, for these attackers to go after. And then once they get access to an individual person or an identity, they start accessing the, the systems that they have access to, gathering more information. And then from there, you know, doing additional post exploitation scenarios. So for me, the biggest thing that corporations and companies really need to focus on is their user population, passwords, uh, and how people authorize and access different systems and how you control all that. I mean, HR has, you know, different systems here. Sales has different systems here. You know, you have different disjointed systems that don't, you know, focus on uh, authentication and authorization of those individuals. There's a lot of problems that we have. And even moving into the cloud, you start talking about cloud infrastructure. Um, you know, you have uh, a big issue there around even visibility and who, who's authenticating where and, and the type of systems you have. It's a big mess right now that I think companies have to deal with. That's great. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you mentioned phishing in, in, as part of that discussion there. Um, we're seeing a lot more news about being phishing resistant, CISA, NIST, and others. Uh, is question for you is, is, is being resilient to phishing that important with so many other problems to solve in the, in the, in the enterprise? There's a, I think IBM released a um, report last year in 2022 that um, all breaches that occurred last year, 22% originated from uh, phishing campaigns. And out of those 22 phishing campaigns, the net medium time um, to be identified was over 200 days. So it's a major problem. Um, you know, most breaches, you know, largely either occur from 
you know, credential stuffing uh, through passwords or through phishing attacks. Those are the two largest that combine to be the most amount of exposure that corporations have. And I can tell you, you know, a lot of my history on the offensive side uh, deals with uh, social engineering and phishing campaigns. And, you know, we always hear about AI and everything else. What's interesting about things like ChatGPT is that organ, um, the, what we've seen from a lot of adversaries is they're using ChatGPT to help generate more believable phishing campaigns, especially in non-native English speaking uh, countries, because it is so good at contextually, un contextually understanding, you know, the English language. So they're getting more sophisticated with technologies that we leverage every day. You saw early on in ransomware where um, they were using kind of their own homegrown encryption, which introduced flaws. They're using military grade encryption now within, you know, their own tooling, the, the APIs and, and cryptography within their own systems. So, you know, phishing ends up being one of the largest attack surfaces that we have. And users, as you can see from a common theme, end up being one of our largest attack surfaces because of the exposures that they introduce. It's just one user that clicks on one link that happens to give some sort of information or open up some sort of document that allows for code execution or to gain initial access onto a system. And then from there, you're really hoping that the you know company has monitoring and detective controls to at least stop it or preventative mechanisms to stop that code execution. But what we're seeing from the adversaries is that they're continuously crafting and changing the ways that they do things. Um, so it becomes very complex in these types of companies, especially again, cloud infrastructure, on-prem, hybrid, all of these things introduce complexity um, that uh, uh, create these types of issues. And I'll give you a quick story. Uh, we do phishing campaigns quite often. And um, the more believable you can make a phishing campaign, the more the higher probability of success you're going to have, obviously. So there's an interesting story that we did recently, uh, an attack we did recently in a, a Fortune 500 company. And uh, we sent a uh, text message out to an individual that we were targeting. And we went through, um, we used open, what's called open source intelligence gathering through LinkedIn, through other you know, common criteria uh, type of, of sources of data. And we were able to look at uh, what, what type of technologies the organization the company was using because everybody on LinkedIn wants to talk about their experience and the technologies they've worked on. So we saw that they had a, a specific uh, multi-factor authentication solution in place. And so what we did is we um, sent them a text message uh, a day before we were going to actually launch the attack. And we said, hey, just FYI, our, our, you know, this system here that we use for multi-factor authentication is currently undergoing upgrades. You may have to hit approve again uh, through your MFA solution, specifically naming their MFA solution. Um, tomorrow, when we start to do maintenance, uh, sorry for the inconvenience. If you have any questions, reach out, reach out to us. And it was a, a phone number and an email address that uh, went to us, obviously. And we sent this text message out. The next day, we sent a push notification. We were able to get this individual's credentials through a different method. And we sent a push notification out uh, to this individual and literally hit approve uh, two seconds later. And then we had access to their VPN concentrator. So, you know, phishing definitely is a major problem. And a lot of them have moved more towards the text messaging, uh, phishing, or also considered smishing, uh, and then getting access to systems uh, from there. And it's typically harder to detect that way because you don't understand unusual behavior from users in most organizations or environments. Wow, that's a great story. Uh, very interesting. Well, uh, with limited time, I'll go to the last question. I know you're, you're an expert on far more elements of the cybersecurity market than, than just authentication and phishing. What other cybersecurity trends are you watching that could have an impact on identity security practices or, or, or the cybersecurity market overall over the next two to three years? You know, I think I think the the push to move off of passwords is is huge. Um, we have to to kill passwords and everything that 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 it deals with, right? You know, and that's a very complex um, situation because you know you have to have partners with all these organizations, standardization and formats uh, and integrations that all these companies support in order for you to really get to that. But you know, I envision a day where you know you pick up your iPhone, you authenticate through your iPhone, and then you can have access to everything. You know, possible that you can can imagine. You know, from from your resources, identity, everything else that that's fully you know compatible with all of the other systems and integration that you have there. Um, keeping it as easy as possible for users. And we find time and time again. I mean, users just error. It's it's you know not everybody's a cybersecurity expert, and even cybersecurity experts error all the time. Um, so it's one of those things where we really have to make the technology as easy as possible for humans, but also recognize too that it's going to get more and more complex. I mean, you look at where systems are heading today, you know, companies are expanding on a, a accelerated rate to enable their businesses and technology. You know, security has to support that, but it has to support that in a way that doesn't introduce new exposures to, to the infrastructure. Um, and that's where, you know, you hear a lot of the, the common terms around zero trust uh, be a, a really big push. So, 
you know, minimize uh, the roles and permissions that users have and the access that they have, uh, which ultimately will um, help reduce the attack surface that organizations really, really have across their, their enterprise. And I think you, you're seeing a lot of the, the shift from on-prem to continue to move to cloud, uh, which is great. But, you know, the issue that I see with most companies is that they don't have cloud security experts. So they, you know, plop everything into cloud, but they don't know necessarily what they're doing. And it becomes unstructured, chaotic. Uh, there's systems out there they don't know about. Uh, it's very difficult to manage and maintain. They have loose integrations with other systems. People have, you know, 70 different passwords they have to remember from, from all these different cloud providers. And again, it's the the, the promise of, of keeping things non-complex doesn't necessarily hold up. So I think organizations really need to look at when you're adopting new pieces of technology, how do you keep it as simple as possible for the users while also reducing your attack surface um, out there? And I think that's going to be really the common trend across the board. I mean, obviously, the, the big talk everybody's talking about is, is generative AI and where AI kind of fits in the market sp space, especially in cybersecurity. I think there's a lot of approaches there that can simplify how we look at attacks in environments, especially around data telemetry and, and, and overall, even on the identity side, um, how that applies. It, the, you know, the issue that we're going to run into is, again, that the type of data and unstructured data that we have to deal with is very complex. So the modeling around that's going to be uh, very interesting to see how that applies to cybersecurity. But, you know, I'm very optimistic. I mean, companies are doing a lot more around cybersecurity. Uh, we're, we're seeing, you know, increases around uh, funding and budget upwards of 22% a year. I think it's 12% a year, but 22% over the next, you know, two years. Um, so we continue to see an increase uh, in spend. However, we have to make sure that the spend is focused on the right type of things. And I think everybody's like, well, hey, we need to spend on all of these different things over here. Whereas really it comes down to the users. It comes down to, you know, phishing prevention. It comes down to making sure that you can identify who that individual is and, and authorize them to access the type of data and look for anomalies in those types of, of, of authorization access control. Uh, and then from there, kind of pushing everything out. But, um, you know, it, there's a lot of, a lot of good stuff happening. It's just, if you do everything at once, it seems overwhelming. Focusing on the basics, I think is the most important. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Make sure the spend is focused on what, what matters most. Uh, that's, that's a great, great comment. So, Ultimately, at the end yeah. of the day, you know, Joe, our, 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 our job is reducing risk, right? And, um, you know, we're not doing a good job if, if we're trying to reduce all the risk in the organization, because that's not possible. But focusing on the most important uh, risk reductions, which at the end of the day, you know, our highest pr uh, probability and, and breaches come from uh, the user population. So let's focus on those. That's great. Well, thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, okay. so that's all the, all the time we have for today's episode. Again, I want to sincerely thank Dave for his wisdom and his insights. Uh, you'll be looking for other episodes of Axiom's vlog series in the near future, where we'll share additional thoughts from a variety of different security experts, including some of our customers, partners, and of course, other thought leaders like Dave. So thanks once again, Dave. Really appreciate your insights. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me today. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you.